going on? This is City Wrestling Radio, and this, well, this is our weekly, usually it's weekly retro Sunday night heat review, but this week, it's uh, it's October 18th, 1998, the date we travel back to with my uh, with my time travel compadre, Jose Marty Osagara. Marty McFly. My yeah. Marty McFly. I guess that makes me Doc Brown. Oh, that means I'm Velveteen Dream. Damn it. And you're Kushida. Anyways, just don't beat me up like he does to Velveteen Dream. Nonetheless, I'm Corey Smith. You're Jose Osagara. Osagara. And uh, we're going to go back to, like I said, October 18th, 1998 for WWF Judgment Day in your house. Yes. Because it's an in your house. It's not just Judgment Day. Remember that. And I think in 1999 is when they... I'm starting to... It's starting to look like that, in, at least in my opinion. Right? It's starting to look like what? They, they're getting rid of the in your house. Oh, insignia. yeah, yeah. It feels like the... Um, they're, this is they're the last of it. Drop, yeah, because they're not mentioning it anymore. Like, I think we get Capital like... Carnage in your house. and uh, But other than, other than that, it's not like Survivor Series in your house. Because, mm-hmm. I mean... There's always been Survivor Series, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we're going to talk about the full show, uh, plus the uh, Sunday Night Heat that, you know, was kind of like the pre-show going into it. Uh, but before It I get... did feel like a pre-show, didn't it? <sighs> yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I feel like they had more matches in these pre-shows than they did in pre-shows before. You know what I mean? In, like, of pre-shows nowadays. Time. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But we're going to get into all of it. Uh, before I do, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> Hit the little thumbs up bell, notify, all that stuff to make us happy here at City Wrestling Radio. We want to know that you like us. Please, please tell me you like us. Uh, at CWR4 and 5 on Twitter and at City Wrestling Radio on Instagram and Facebook because it's the best way to stay up to date with City Wrestling Radio and all the cool shit or good shit we post. You know, I forgot. It's the good shit, not cool shit. And uh, yeah, no, let's get into it. Let's talk. Some WWF Judgment Day, starting with Sunday Night Heat. Jose, I will yes, let you sir. take this, uh, take the pre-show here. All right. Well, live from Chicago, Illinois, here's where you get heat. Uh, and we start with the Vince McMahon Stone Cold Steve Austin program from the beginning to the, its current state. Um, I feel so like they know, showed this like three or four times, the, the video package. They show, You know what? They showed this last week. Yeah, two or three times breaking it down, breaking it up into that's the what it pieces. was. Yeah, yeah. Yo, that's yeah. what it was. Yeah, last week it was bad. And this week they show the, the complete program up to date, uh, yeah. abbreviated but complete. Um, and we continue with Shane Watch ninety eight. Shane is in the house and he's it's extra energetic. Day eleven. Reason. Shane Watch day eleven. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Or day no day twelve. Sorry. Day twelve. Oh, this is uh, yeah. This is I was gonna say issue number twelve, but it's episode twelve. Volume, Sunday Night Heat volume twelve. <laughs> so uh right yeah, before silk stockings first match we get steve blackman coming into the ring with bradshaw getting the jobber entrance how's that for a surprise well i think they got something planned with bradshaw coming up i i, I have a feeling mm-hmm. so um i'm not going to go through the match you know step by step but i will say that during this match we did have a miscommunication a slight miscommunication on a uh bradshaw clothesline where it looked like uh blackman didn't um get the message that the clothesline was coming in time. So he threw up the block and Bradshaw looked all confused. So what's going on? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. There's a few times uh, that happened. Um, yeah. The, the, that these night. guys, well, you know, Blackman is very green. I'm pretty sure they didn't have a, well, they, they did have OVW at the time, right? Um, I don't know. I don't think, I mean, I'm going to search it up. Keep, keep talking. Let's see. Yeah. So he, you know, he, he probably didn't have the minor league system to go through to get ready to be in, you know, one of your regular WWF competitors. Uh, so, you know, comes off a little bit green. Uh, Black yeah, it was founded, did get the, founded in 1993. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. But we, they didn't get um, attached or co sponsored by WWF until later on. Maybe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep looking. Let's see. Okay, well, Blackman does get the win with a front kick to the chest, as described by Shane McMahon. After the match, we get a blue blazer surprise. I know this surprises mm. you as well as me. So um, it was kind of I'll... depressing, I'll be honest. Uh, to me, it was like, I don't know, it's kind of like the beginning of the end of Owen's life. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was kind of like, it, fuck. Yeah, and it kind of snuck up on, uh, snuck up on me. I wasn't yeah. expecting it so soon. I thought it happened a little bit later on down the line, but I guess it didn't. Yeah. I mean, I knew it happened in 99, but mm-hmm. I, I didn't think we would start the Blue Blazer gimmick right now. 
Uh, well, it, it went back and forth, right? He went from Blue Blazer to Owen to Blue Blazer to Owen back and forth, right? He did it on this show, <laughs> this <laughs> yeah. night, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah uh, unbeknownst sure. to himself. Yeah, so one thing that bugged me after this was mm-hmm. Blackman recovers super fast. He's just like, something that, okay, bye. Yeah, yeah, and this is something that's been going on in WWF lately where people, after getting beat down severely, they just get up like, as soon as the guy's up the ramp, oh, I'm okay. What yeah. happened? Hey, yeah. hey, guy. You know? Yeah. Then we go to break. After the break, we do have an odd happening with the oddities and the Boricuas already started. I remember, now, I'm not, for a second, I was like, who the fuck are those guys in the ring with the oddities? And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, Los Boricuas. I totally mm-hmm. forget. It's funny because I remember their music because it was like this kind of like Cholo-esque music. Yeah. You know, it was like, brown, brown. you know, it was like kind of like that, like 1990s hip hop. Mm-hmm. You could hear it to go to some low riders. Um, <laughs> like I can't, you know what I mean? Like that was a very popular genre back in the day. too. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no, I, I just haven't seen them in, in quite some time. So. I was just like, damn, okay. Okay, so not a very good match. Corrigan at one point does get three teamed by all three of the Boricuas, but the ref decides to focus on Golga trying to make a save. Golga ran wild, man. Yeah, but I think Golga's ref, actually like, the most rest, like sound wrestler of the entire bunch. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But you know, it, it just found it odd that the the three the three team started happening and the referee was watching. And then senses uh, Golga coming in and decides to turn his back and go, hey, 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 get back, get back. Yeah. So, you know, what are you going to do? Referee uh, works and re- referee jobs in 1998. I feel like they were just hiring anybody because like, Judgment yeah. Day, even Judgment Day 2, it was like, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, th- these guys got the earpiece in. I don't know what, you know, I don't know what Vince sees or yeah. saw at the time, but. Well, Vince yeah. was a character at the time, so I wonder if he was just too involved with that, too. You know? He was chilling in the wheelchair. Come on. He was, he was a gorilla in the wheelchair. Um, Silva does enter to make da- to do some damage on the rest of the trio. Uh, tagged Golga for the W. Right after the match, the headbangers rush ICP. The outlaws make a save and beat up on the headbangers. Thus, is it creating a match for Judgment Day, or was this match already booked? Was it? Do you remember? What? Uh, uh, the Outlaws versus the Headbangers. Oh, I think it was already booked. Okay, so yeah, that explains why they came in after the fact. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Uh, and next, what we see is an out of character Paul Bearer playing Percy <laughs> Pringle, but they're still Dude. calling him Paul Bearer. Okay. What was up with this? Paul Bearer, they just get these close up shots of Paul Bearer filling up his plate with food. Ooh, I want to get some food. It's so good. And, so... and then later, they're like, the entire night, like, Paul Bear is here. I'm like, yeah, because you guys just showed him at catering, like in the in the opening show. Like, mm. first off, I know Paul Bear is fat. You know, like we we know, but never before in my life have I seen a moment in time where there was so much fat shaming going on in WWE. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. they're just straight up showing him. Like there was even a scene where he's like, they're like, ah, take take eight brownies, take nine. <laughs> like they they kept telling him like he's like one two three stack your oh, plate oh, 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 oh. stack it I was like oh my god and I'm like first off if that's how Paul Bear acted backstage I could believe it secondly why they got to show it though you know what I mean yeah yeah I totally right, so immediately after we get Godfather and Farouk and this is well establishing the fact that the nation is in turmoil well okay. Yeah. This uh-huh. match could have been played up so much better. You know what I mean? No, this whole angle, the whole thing could the have been thing. done. First off, better. everyone's coming out to the fucking rocks music, and that's bullshit. <laughs> the, but there were little point. tweaks. There's little tweaks. Um, so with with the Godfather, though, it just to me, it seems like with, with Farouk and all that, like they could have played up the because remember Farouk and or, or the Godfather was a member of the Nation of Domination with mm-hmm. Farouk. Uh, Farouk was leader. What was, so what was his name when he was in the music. Nation? I forgot. Say that again. What was uh, Godfather's name when he was in the Nation? It started oh. with a K. I can't remember. But they were in the Nation together, and now he's coming out like a pimp. You know what yeah. I mean? Why doesn't Farouk get on the microphone and go, yeah, like, what have you become, man? Like, you used to be this dominant force coming down to the ring. You used to be proud. F- and that wouldn't, like made kind of Farouk into a baby face for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But like, he could have been like, yo, what have you turned into now? You're, you're a pimp. 
And then he goes, pimpin' ain't easy. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's all he's got to say. All explained here, yeah. And then so we get a we get a, a recap of the Rock, yeah, getting beat down, but By Mark we don't Henry. get any history between you know what's happening with um, with the Godfather. Well, I think yeah, I think the Godfather just they're just like, well, the Godfather just uh, he's pimping now, so mm-hmm. you know. And the end, instead of coming out with one hoe, they had to make sure he came out with two. Oh my god! Every time they call the women hoes, too, the women are just like, oh my god, they're just like laughing. Yeah. Like, oh my god. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he comes in and he cuts a little mini promo, you know, saying, you know who I am. That's a pimp. Yeah. Yeah. Chicago, for some reason, has the best hoes ever born. And then Chicago gets a nice little pop in there. Yeah, I mean, so I've never been pretty to much, Chicago, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so pretty much the Godfather says, you know, fight me or pick one of my hoes and call it a night. And, of course, Farouk picks the fight. Yeah. And comes D'Lo and Mark Henry to show support for their boy, which boy, of course, the Godfather. For what reason, I don't know. Um, and the Godfather goes over clean. Yeah. And uh, uh, queuing D'Lo and Mark Henry to come in to beat down Farouk. Yeah. And of course, The Rock makes the save on your boy. The Rock makes the save. And then, but after Farouk leaves, who approaches him? The Jackal. The Jackal. Yes. Uh, one Don Callis approaches Farouk and as you may know this leads to a certain angle with another guy he's going to join forces with I don't remember this called the Acolytes uh Don and he's the in yes the, in yes the, the in jackal between. was the one that originally got them together okay uh, That's because history that escapes he, memory. he was the creepy and then eventually they get picked up by the Ministry of Darkness um and you know the rest of it. And then eventually they just they stop caring about Satan worshiping and start drinking beers in front of mm-hmm. doors that have no rooms. <laughs> just door frames. Which I always thought was weird, but and people would knock. We'll get there in a couple of years. Damn, nobody knocks. Yeah. So uh, after the break, yeah, we have that mention of the jackal, and we also have Val joining Val Venus joining the commentary table with Fanny Pack included. Did you notice this? Okay, this is like the 1998 like uniform for Uniforms, wrestlers yeah. when they're not working. It's the WWF Attitude shirt tucked into a pair of jeans with a giant fanny pack. Not and just like, like, not yeah, just the one ahead. you just put your your cell phone wallet. No, this is one where you're putting fucking big amounts of money you're putting jewelry in you're putting you know maybe lotions maybe some vitamins <laughs> some branch chain valvenus amino acid you know yeah maybe condoms or you know oh, valvenus didn't cigarettes dog, for sure yeah so you have for some reason valvenus cuts a promo using a different voice did you see this no I don't he, he wasn't he wasn't using the regular voice. Hey guys, he, I'm was, using, he was using the stuff enough voice where he talks about he's 185, 255, 265, and a whole load of money for your belt. He was using that type of voice. Oh, okay. That's so we get that, and then uh after that we get a Percy Pringle interview once again. Oh, and let me get some more brownies. Oh. And he's asked, yeah, he's asked, what are you doing here? And what is he doing here, Corey? Do you know? He's getting brownies. He's getting brownies and he's here to watch the show because the match is going to be one hell of a match. Oh, it's going to be one hell of a match involving his wink, s- wink. son. Oh, I get it. One hell of a match. Mm-hmm. It's the Undertaker and Kane. Yeah, so we go to break and come back and we have Double J, Jeff Jarrett facing off against uh, who I want to call Too Cold Scorpio, but it's just Scorpio because we're in WWF. Yeah, he got warm. Yeah, so during commentary, we noticed that Val Venus uh, points out that Dustin uh, two weeks ago was conservative, and ever since he became Gold Dust, he was, he's a lefty liberal. And yeah. I just found it strange that we find history repeating itself. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and with you know t- these times today, how people refer to each other in such you know oh, yeah. narrow views that we get this back even back then. Um, but Val does get a golden gift. What's in the box, man? What's in the, the box? box? You know, I've already added that to a video. I can't add that to this video again. No. Uh, but uh, no, I um, yeah. When I saw this, I was like, he gets a he gets the present, and it's a gold uh, cup, like a, you put around your your ding dong uh, mm-hmm. to prevent to prevent damage. Uh, he throws it away, which stupidly he should have. I mean, we'll get there, but yeah, yeah. And then he runs away. He, like he gets so offended Ooh. that he's like, "I'm leaving. I'm throwing my microphone down. I'm out of here." Maybe he's, 
maybe he's like, fuck, I got to get back and get some brownies before they're all gone, man. Yeah. And this is all happening while the match is happening. <laughs> Which yeah, is yeah, bothering the hell out of me. Yeah. Wait, what um, match is it again? Oh, Scorpio yeah. versus Jeff Jarrett. So uh, after all this, Jeff Jarrett uh, seemingly gets the advantage. Yeah, and we get a oops ref moment again. <laughs> Brought to you by JVC, the oops ref moment. Yeah, so we get uh, Al Snow running in for some reason. I'm not too sure why, but he packs head into the referee's back pocket. And the referee yeah, this was fucking notice. weird. Yeah. The head was on a stick, too, by the way. It was on a stick. It was on a stick. So he turned the ref turns around and uh, looks at Scorpio or Jeff. Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett. And Jeff Jarrett's yeah, like basically he at, like saw a ghost. He's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get what mystical powers the head has. But so, for some reason, everybody's scared. <laughs> well, head has even, pretty you know, good mystical powers. I mean, yeah, it, even even later on, Mark Merrill leaves has a lot of people defenseless issues with head. Yeah, exactly. So and vulnerable distraction, distraction leads to a lame roll up. Uh, Scorpio wins. Yeah. Hooray! We're all confused. We don't know why. Yeah, yeah. It was, it Next, was we get a, a the entrance of Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's in the building, ladies and gentlemen, and he's trying to get to his regular dressing room, but the whole backstage crew directs him into the room closet. No, no, the Austin, you can't be back here. Just the just the ref. You got to go referee. It was like a fucking broom closet, which like my it was just Mike Kyoto in there by himself. So I feel like that yeah. was Mike Kyoto. It's like Mike, Mike, Mike Kyoto found a space. Like, oh, good, a, a private space. And they were just like, ah. make sure you're putting on your your shirt while they bum rush you inside yeah. the uh, closet. Yeah. But back in the ring, Shamrock is due to receive his Intercontinental title, Shamrock. and Triple H must be the one that gives it to him. Yeah, I, I don't uh, get this at all. Why does Triple H have to give it to him? Yeah. So we see Shamrock in his, you know, his uh, regular street gear. He's like in a uh, full sweatsuit, like a full. Like, like champions, like gray sweat, like a sweatshirt and sweatpants yeah. with it's some a, running yeah, shoes. Gray on gray on gray. Yeah. Gray on gray. And we, gray. And we get a, a recap of the IC tournament, um, which we saw on what was known as the War Zone. Remember the War Zone? Yeah, it was like the second hour of Raw, right? Second hour of Raw is yeah. correct. So uh, then we get the entrance of uh, Triple H. Uh, we see Austin. Do you know Zerby. why they did that? What? Uh, because they were able to rate the show separately in the second hour, they were able to use more profanity and things of that nature and get a little. Yeah, raunchier. because it was after the ten o'clock. Right? Yeah, Saturday so night. they were. It so it was. Hour. But if you had a two-hour show that started at one point and went to one point, I think you would have to abide by the hours that uh, you started at. So the nine o'clock hour was raw, and the second hour was war. War zone. The yes. war zone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense, and I believe this is the South Park rule because South Park started at ten o'clock. Yeah. And they started using, you know, curse words and, you know, some um, some mature themes on that show. Yes, they killed children. OK, so we get a back back a closet or broom janitor's room view of Stone Cold. Yeah. And he's watching on the tiniest transistor 10 inch television. A little, a little but yeah, well, I mean, I was probably good at the time. You know, what I mean, he's probably like, God, I could sit here and watch this match by myself. God damn it. Watch mm. this match. But yeah. Yeah, so we go back in the ring, and Slaughter's letting DX know that he's burning X Pac in China. Go to the back, you maggots. Yeah, I didn't get that. I was like, okay, whatever. Yeah, yeah, because it, it just burned time. That's what it was. Yeah. So uh, Pat Patterson comes up, steps to the mic, and tells young Ken Shamrock that he reminds him of a young Pat Patterson that's your first intercontinental champion. Um well, didn't uh, then, was this the segment, or was it later that they were kind of ripping on Pat Patterson? I think it was later because I, I took notes on it. But I'm just gonna mm-hmm. say it now since I'm bringing it up. There was a point in the show when uh, they said, "Oh, did you hear Pat Patterson was the first Intercontinental Champion? He won the title uh, in Rio de Janeiro." As you know, the story of him winning the title in Rio de Janeiro, the tournament, it's questioned. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But they met. They somebody says. I think the king says, yeah, he won that title with 16 guys behind him. <laughs> and I was like, was that? And was a kid, I, I would just be like, oh, yeah. But now I'm like, wait, now that I know he's gay, I'm like, yeah. was that a slide at was, Pat Patterson? Like they were trying yeah, to be sly about that? it? Like a, yeah. It's like, damn. A really slap? Yeah. It's kind of fucked up, but all right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he does flub a line, though, when he tells uh, um, Triple H, since you stole the belt at WrestleMania, Re- and Triple H tried to get the it was SummerSlam. Yeah. Hey, Nimrod, it was SummerSlam. Yeah. yeah. 
So, uh, you know, back and forth. And Triple H, for some reason, gets a microphone. And, of course, he does his, you know, we got two words for you. Stick on the outside. Oh, and can't, sh- fucking Shamrock's pissed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shamrock That's... is legit like, what? <sighs> After everything, you could tell him, dude, we ran out of coffee. <sighs> he looks like that guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So we go to break. We come back and Vince is in the house in the wheelchair. Yeah. And we go back to Shamrock that's hanging out with the old men in the back. And I don't know what he's possibly talking about, but Trips is in like his car is in the garage and doors are closed. And somehow he he can fucking he can drive with a fucked up leg. But sure. Yeah. And he mumbles something to uh, Ken Shamrock. I think it was just like, I got two words for you. Probably not even that. He probably said, "Hey Ken, where where's the exit for my car?" And he was like, "Oh, why I gotta." <laughs> so he, so he bum rushes Triple H, slams, kicks the door on Triple H's leg, which didn't look. Uh, it looked like he actually got his leg for a second. Yes, because it bounced back like yeah. before it hit back all the way. And I was like, "What and, did it just hit?" And there was a dent on the outside of the door. Yeah, yeah. Shamrock, um, he can conjure anger pretty quickly. Yeah, I think he's he's living on anger, like uh, oh. the first Avengers. What's your secret? It's, I'm always angry. I'm always angry. So yeah, he's always angry. Hey, Bruce so Banner. yeah, they get into some beef in the car, and of course, China tries to make a save, but she gets pulled out. It's chaos, chaos. Yeah. Um. Next, we get Vince on the ramp with uh, super security and German shepherds. Oh, this big, big boss man. Yeah, just, and he was like under like a ill ass mask. Did you see? Yeah, that? They, they put the mask on for a minute. Yeah, but they you know they take it off all the time. Um, so he cuts a uh, big Bob boss man does a little promo. You know the you all suck up. I mean, the, what am I saying? Um, you all better bo- listen. The up. real boss man, not the big boss man, but the real boss man, cuts the you all suck and kiss ass at your jobs. Uh, Austin needs to kiss my ass and do me a favor, blah, 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 and we're going to do this, and you're going to do that. If you don't pay attention to me and what I say, I just then I'm going to fire you. I don't like the cop gimmick. I hate the cop gimmick. Yeah. yeah Even yeah. though, okay, I, I will say this. I did dress as the big boss man for Halloween when I was like three years old. Three or four years old. Remember those old... The blue shirt? Remember blue those, shirt no, no, remember those old WWF costumes that you, it would come with like a mask that you put over and it would have like... And a, a vinyl? A vi- yeah. I did that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the blue shirt one. <laughs> Those are classic. Yeah. But so Vince is asking Austin to bend his morals and do what he asks. And if you defy me, it's not Vince McMahon that's going to screw Austin. It's Austin Stone that screws cold. Austin. Yeah. Um, but we never really get a definition of what he means by bend your morals and do this and do well, he that. Said, he, said, he didn't say bend your morals. He said something like, you will have to, like, uh, you have to raise the hand, uh, humble yourself. He says, "Yeah, you're going to have to humble on. yourself and raise the hand of the new champion." So all he was saying is, "Be the ref and do the job of a ref, or else I'm going to fire you." Is that all he was saying? Yeah, which I guess you should say to every ref. Yeah, do and, your job, you know, or I'll fire you. And 100, percent that's what he's saying. But I don't know why he couldn't just say, "Do your job, Austin, or I'll fire you." Instead, that we get this whole cryptic. Do what I say and bend to my will, or else I'll fire you. I don't get why he couldn't just say, "Hey, Austin, you come to the building, I fire you." Regular ref, yeah. get in there and do your job. Well, you, that's the easy way, but there's no drama there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And we go off the air with that. Can we go to Silk Stockings and Pacific Blue after dinner? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, we go to WWF Judgment Day, which actually I need to make a correction on the show. It is not. As much as they say it in the show, it is not hailing from Chicago, Illinois. It's hailing from Rosemont, Illinois, uh, which is a, sub, a suburb of Chicago. they mention Chicago a lot. Yeah. This is actually the fifth straight sellout in the Rosemont Horizon with an attendance of 18,153. I believe. Stone Cold lets you know about that later on. I yeah. believe uh, 16,000 were paid. So uh, overall in the show, I mean. Oh, boy. It's not as bad as Breakdown. I, I will say that. Breakdown fucking yeah. sucked. Mm-hmm. But, however, these shows are getting a little longer uh, by every pay-per-view. And um, it, it's it, it's some matches, like, I feel like they're stuck on this thing where they could they have to have, like, four matches on the pre-show and then, like, 
seven matches on the main card, seven, mm-hmm. eight matches. But like, no, wait, they have 10 matches on the main card, but some of the matches were just really like, seem like they just went like fucking dragged, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and you know what they did too was uh, they, the, even the good matches, they began, you know, on a good pace. And then the finish just kills oh, yeah, everything. Yeah, all yeah. momentum. That I think the match I think had. I wrote that. All. I wrote that like two or three. Uh, no, I think I wrote it like three or four times. Mm-hmm. Uh, we kick off the show with actually a pretty cool 1990s video package. I will say that uh, where it's like this nuke being set off. Um, you know, it's Judgment Day. All oh, the end of the world. Um, Vince McMahon re- he says uh, he says you violated me, Stone Cold. Which I don't know why. I, more people didn't say that. Uh, but the thing sounds like <laughs> it's being edited or narrated by Terry Funk. Like, did you yeah. catch it? It's like, I got that feel. Yeah. It's like, Judgment Day is upon us. And we all must bend the knee. You know, things like that. And mm-hmm. it sounds or, like an old Texas like man. Chris Christopherson or somebody. Yeah. Uh, it was a very weird start to the show uh, with the intro of the video packages at this like ominous tone with like the looming nuke, the nukes being set off. When it cuts to the fans, it's like playing this weird like 1990s party music. Mm-hmm. Like it's and, like, and I think that was overdub. It no, it definitely was mm-hmm. um, because it was like the nukes are being set off. Will you survive Judgment Day? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Judgment Day, everybody! I'm just like, <laughs> I mean, I could understand the overdubbing to get around licensing, but mm-hmm. pick a better song. You know, mm-hmm. pick something a little bit more. A little heavier, maybe a little bit more ominous, you know, darker. Or just use Undertaker's theme. There you go. There you go. Because his theme is, like, probably the best Undertaker theme at this moment. Yeah. Uh, we kick it off with our first match of the night. Al Snow versus Mark, the marvelous Mark Marrow. This match got about seven minutes and 12 seconds. Um, seven minutes too long. Uh, Marrow is accompanied by Jacqueline, who finally has her WWF Women's Championship. And did you notice she's showing it off left and right? She's like, oh, yeah. look at my title. I mm-hmm. have my title. This she title. She herself, too. Like, this belongs to this. This title yeah. looked brand fucking new. Oh, yeah. It yeah. looked brand new. and I, I, She just got it. Yeah. yeah. And then fucking Jeff Jarrett comes to the ring. He says, I won't end this match. Meryl, you're out. Ref, tell him I'm in. And is this all because of the... Have they been having a history instead of the I head we saw earlier? I, I don't had, know. Uh, I think it was just what happened. No, because Jarrett was feuding with X-Pac a couple weeks ago. Remember? That's right. Yeah. The, the hair versus hair. And, and uh, Al Snow was feuding with fucking Sergeant Slaughter of all people. Mm-hmm. Well, he was trying to get a job. And Mero was feuding yeah. with... Well, Mero was with Jacqueline, who was feuding with Sable. Mero doesn't really feud with anybody. Fucking great had, worker, though. Yeah, he was. He, you know, he had a little beef with Edge, but Edge has his own problems. Yeah, um, yeah. Marrow attacks Snow right when the bell rings. Power slam to Marrow. Uh, the King, the King, I, like literally the first match of the show, the King makes a reference says, uh, "Ha! Even Snow's teeth are retarded." Mm. <sighs> oh, Ouch! I was like, well, "This is going to be a long show, a long fucking show." Uh, Marrow is creeped out by head and, and Snow's corner. I don't know why. Mystical powers by head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, this whole this whole match, the drama was was uh, the highlight of the drama was between head and Jackie. Like they were the drama of the match. Yeah. The, the match itself was it felt like a piss break at yeah. the beginning. Uh Snow hits a moonsault. Uh Jacqueline distracts him. Uh low blow to a DDT to Snow, followed by a kick out. Jackie gets involved again. Uh, and choke snow on the ro- or trip snow on the ropes. Uh, double jump moon salt to Al Snow by Mark Merrow. You know when he jumps up from he flips around, does another yeah. Dude, mm-hmm. Merrow's so good. Uh, he- athletic, yeah. The uh, arm lock headbutts to Merrow. Snow gets another moon salt, but Jackie pulls him out of the way. Uh, pulls Merrow out of the way. Snow dodges a shooting star press. Uh, snow reverses a TKO finisher into the snow plow. Uh, kind of like a modified brain buster. Uh, Snow gets the pin in the wind. Looks great. That thing is awesome. Yeah. No, the finish. The finish. Actually, this the finish of this match wasn't bad. The it match kind of sucked. Legit, yeah, it's it's a one out of five match. It's all the back and forth was, of the show. It's like the finish either sucks and the match yeah. is okay, or the the match sucks and the finish is okay. Yeah, because this match pretty much sucked. If it wasn't for Jackie and Head, then it, it would be like, what is this doing here? Yeah. 
Uh, but at least we get a little bit of drama. They get a number one out of five out of, for me. They get a, uh, this match went a little too long. The fans uh, were not into it at all. It's it's weird because they were into the Saturday or Sunday night heat show matches, yeah. but I feel like they died off by this point, it, like by the first it, it, match. Yeah. Well, it became a piss break. Yeah. You know what I mean? After heat and then the beginning of this match and everything that's going on, people were like, I need, you know, we already had three beers. Time to go take a piss. Yeah. Not a good way. I don't think it was a, the good way to start a pay-per-view. No, no. Oh. Uh, then we get uh, DOA, uh, ver- uh, DOA and Pretty Paul Ellering, uh, who mm-hmm. is in this match versus LOD two thousand, which I I kind of like because P- uh, Paul Ellering is the former manager of the Road Warriors and Legion of Doom. Right. Um, guess and how he does have he does have history of being involved in matches like legit third member of LOD in WCW, then known as NWA. Okay, yeah. Oh, when LOD was a faction. When LOD was LOD, when it was just uh, well, wasn't well, the, uh, there were the Legion of Doom? It was just uh, wasn't there one point though where there was like the three of them were known as the LOD, but the two of them were the Road Warriors who were within the LOD. Mm, yeah, probably. I I don't remember. Okay, you know, but I'm. Yeah. I, it, it sounds effing legit. So yeah, I trust your memory. Uh yeah, from before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Draws is now a full member of LOD 2000, uh, complete with face, face pain, pain and mm-hmm. um, shoulder pads. Mm-hmm. Uh, Animal and uh, one of the oh, twins. Oh, and he has the slick, uh, tight pants. Yeah. To go along yeah, with. yeah. You He's know? no longer like the throwing up guy anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, Animal runs wild, knocking all members of DOA to the outside. Hawk in the ring, battling Skull. I think it was Skull. I don't know. Uh, seems nobody like, knows. See, nobody fucking knows ever. <laughs> um, it's It's... You people say that about sometimes about the Usos, but you can tell the Usos apart. Skull and mm-hmm. Ball, there's no, no chance. No, no. He, like I think uh, King was like, oh, and uh, one of the members of Dead and Rebel are. Yeah, you. It's so hard to tell them apart. They got twin magic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hawk, uh, he uh, gets in the ring. He's battling with Skull. Uh, seems like he's got a little rust to him, though. He seems a little slow. I don't know if he was yeah. playing into it. Uh, almost being dropped on his head at one point with uh, when Skull power slammed him. Uh, mm-hmm. Hawk didn't go up all the way. Uh, DOA isolating draws. Ellering tagged in. He pulls uh, he pulls the pant leg um, because his kick is so much more. Oh, yeah. He pulls up his like pant leg. Ellering, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, like because his kick is so much more devastating. With his sock being shown. It makes better noise because the pants were yeah, yeah, okay. muting, That's muting true. the sound. Yeah. That's true. He was smart. Uh, Doomsday device to Skull. And then Draws just runs in and takes the pin over Skull. And uh, which um, I, it was another BS match. I will say that. Uh, yeah, it was with, the, with the finish. Lot- the, it was the finish. Well, you know what? It, they did. Um, Hawk did look rust, rusty. Animal didn't look as... Uh, strong as he usually is. Uh, Draws is a new member, so we're still Draws trying to good, get yeah. adapted. Yeah, he was good. You know, he always looks like an animal. Yeah. Well, um, so add all that, and DOA weren't at working as good as Paul Ellering was. Yeah. He was like the star of their. Well, I don't think El- I think Ellering has investment to sell for them. You know what I mean? Like he's like mm-hmm. these are my boys. I'm gonna I'm gonna sell for them. Um, yeah, yeah, and he did, and Ellering did take a savage bump, and he saved himself on the outside yeah. when he got flipped over the uh, ropes and mm-hmm. got tossed, and his neck was under the ropes on the opposite side, and he pushed off. Perfect timing to save himself from getting a little nice. clothesline from the ring ropes. Uh, well, this is not the Road Warriors of years prior. Uh, seeing mm-hmm. them like this is kind of sad, uh, knowing where it all goes. Uh, the finish is fucking stupid because, A, Draws wasn't the legal man. Mm-hmm. If you remember, uh, and the the announcers even mentioned, they said, Draws wasn't a legal man, but he made mm-hmm. the pin. What? Yeah. No. No. That does, like, Hawk was the legal man. Like, the ref should have been like, Draws, no. Get up, buddy. Get up. No, you're, you're not legal. Yeah. So that's part of the drama that they're trying to do to split up the Road Warriors, remember? Because we still got to see Hawk jump off the Titan Tron. And... <sighs> Boy, do we. Well, we yeah. don't. We don't review fucking... We don't review raw, so yeah, you're right. Thank God uh, for that. Uh, but let's see. Um, yeah. uh, Hawk is looking at draw sideways. Uh, I mean, I think he should be looking at the ref sideways, but whatever. Well, draws too because he attempted the pin. He wanted all the glory. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Christian, uh, the former independent wrestler Christian Cage, is making his debut into WWF now as a member of the Brood, accompanied by Gen Grill. 
facing Takamishi Noku for the light heavyweight championship. This match went about eight minutes and 34 seconds. Can't believe you got a title shot so soon. Well, I mean, it's the light heavyweight championship, dude. I mean, everybody gets a shot. Uh, it's not that everybody gets a shot. Just Vince does not care about that title. Like yeah. if the cruiserweight title nowadays wasn't on NXT, there would be no, you know what I mean? If it was back on no, 205 we, yeah. Live. Yeah. Uh, the two exchange strikes. Uh, Taka reversed out of a belly to back suplex. Springboard plancha to Christian. Falling knee drop to Christian. Reverse DDT to Taka. Uh, plancha to Taka. Powerbomb to Taka Mishinoko. At one point, Christian looks around and uh, seems like he just forgot a spot. Mm-hmm. Like he just kind of like looks around and then they just keep going. Yeah, uh, and there, there was a few instances of that where people were a little lost. Yeah. Taka was- evades a splash. Uh, pop-up drop kick to Christian. Asai moonsault to Christian. Back and forth between the two. Eventually, Taka goes for the Mishinoku driver, but Christian does a very, very sloppy reversal into a roll-up, and they just kind of make sure his shoulders are down, and they count mm-hmm. the pin and the win. And uh, Christian, I forgot he was a light heavyweight champion. So yeah. uh, the and new- they did have a they did have a a special fan at the top the the top of the lower bowl. Was that was that Edge? Edge looking on as his little brother wins the championship and he doesn't uh, yeah. even clap. Come on, bro. Well he well he he he's got history with getting grill. Well, you know? At least a little you know. No, no. But no, we get nothing. Hey. No, this is like uh, we get a brooding ooh, edge. Yeah. Well maybe he's like, how do I join them? Maybe I just want to like be a part of the brood too. I want to be brooding. I, I, maybe that's I what he's doing. Brood. Maybe he look he was at- trying like Look how brooding he can be. Like, hey, Gangrel, look at this. I'm a brood right now. Mm. I don't care. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. Where am I at? Um, okay, 3. so three point five. Uh, good match. Th- 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 it was all right. Uh, there was uh, parts of this match that were really good, but the finish was sloppy and dumb. Yeah, but you okay. Know maybe the finish wasn't <laughs> dumb. It was just sloppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'm just juiced because finally we get some good wrestling. And I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. Well, slow down. Because next up, we got Val Venus versus Goldust. And I'm kind of invested in this whole program. Well, yeah. I mean, it's been going on for fucking weeks now. Uh, mm. and, and and who's the fucking baby? Who's the baby face supposed to be? Goldust, right? Yes. yes. Like, in my opinion, it's Goldust. Like, mm-hmm. he's like, he's still in love with his wife, unfortunately, who is like, they're separated, but he still wears the wedding ring. They make sure to... They, they, you see oh. that in the in the one hundred years that Gold Dust uh, took off his one what, <laughs> glove, yeah, what, yeah, and what what other names has he gone by? Uh, just Gold Dust, the right? artist, and Dustin Rhodes, the artist, and, the natural Dustin the Rhodes, artist. You're right, um, natural. Out of all oh, those um, years, there were seven. Remember, you're right. Um, with a plain oh, single. What was the, the one the, in Impact when he was like Gold Dust, but he was all black? When he was like really like going through some shit in his life? Yeah, no, I don't remember. God. Anyways, yeah, I wasn't a big. I don't uh, think I ever watched Impact. Impact. I never watched Impact. Either. I did. I, I watched the Sting years and the early AJ Styles. My dad watched Impact. I never got into it. I was like, that shit no, sucks. Like when it's probably good. What's his name? Was uh, remember when they came out with their own game? Yes. Suicide. That's when I was watching. Yes. Suicide the Wrestler, so, not. Yeah. Yeah. Not uh the video game guy. Anyways, uh, Val Venus versus Goldust. This match got about 12 minutes and five seconds. As JR uh, begins the match, he says, this is a match that originated on the Jerry Springer show. Mm-hmm. Uh, Goldust uh, returned after being harassed by Val Venus for weeks and his ex or his extra- ex- well, I'm trying to say it right. Estranged. Estranged wife. There we go. Yes. I have to hear it first. Uh, yeah, estranged. no. Estranged. Uh, yeah, no, because like I said, he still loves her. She doesn't really give a crap about him. He should just move on. But or does she? But well, at this point, you know what's really funny too. You know what this reminded me of? Hmm. Rusev and Bobby Lashley hmm. and Lana. Mm-hmm. Like I know there was no Lashley porn. Oh, actually, no. There was a wasn't there, there, there a scene there, there, where there they was were in video. bed? They were like mm-hmm. in bed together, right? Mm-hmm. This is the exact fucking angle. It is. Vince it is. copied and pasted Val Venus and Goldust and applied yeah. it to Bobby Lashley and Rusev. Wow. I I just figured that out. Shame, 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 shame. That should get shame, us a, shame, We should shame, get a thousand shame, subscribers shame. just for that. 
Yeah. Uh, let's, so, anyways, Goldust um, cuts off Val's mic um, as because he goes, "Hello, ladies," and then you just hear Goldust, "Hello, Val." <laughs> <laughs> I fucking Great. love Goldust. Yeah. Uh, a sign reads: "There's two signs that I've noticed coming out. Uh, Goldust has penis envy." Which yeah. I don't know. And then uh, there was another one. We lust for gold dust, which I yeah. I did like that one. Yeah. Uh, no, and there was another one. It was Terry for 69. Oh, that was that was us. <laughs> you know, what's funny. I love the people who make the giant. Si- I hate the people. Actually, I'm being sarcastic no. when I say I love. I hate the people who make the giant signs that just say like Austin 316. Yeah. Like there was an, there was one for this show where they had in two big ass pieces. There were like two five foot boards. And they reached over, uh, and it was you know front row. Yeah, but I didn't get a chance to read it. They they couldn't get it straight. So f those guys. That's um, strikes back and forth to begin the match. They battle inside and outside. Ve- Venus dropped on his face uh, into uh, the stairs. It actually looked pretty. They, they these guys knew how to take uh, fall on those stairs. Though, I will say that. Yeah, and Venus is really stiff. But if he's going to be stiff against anybody, and I don't mean any pun by this, but if he's going to get <laughs> stiff with anybody, it's gold dust. Um, Dustin, good old Dustin. Crossbody off the turnbuckle onto the floor to Gold Dust. Springboard backdrop to Val Venus. Uh, is- and that really shows the leniency the ropes have in WWF back in the day. Did you see how much uh, give they had? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then eventually, this match fucking slows down. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gold Dust uh, runs into the corner post. Um, there's so many rest holds. I want to, like, literally, this is my what I wrote in my notes. So many rest holds. I want to peel my the skin off my face. Just do something. That's how I felt. Yeah. Uh, Val working on the left arm of Dust. Power slam to Gold Dust, but Venus goes to the top rope. Gold Dust fights Venus on the top. Superplex to Venus. Val dodges, dodges a weird looking elbow drop by Gold Dust. Um, this is regular Gold, uh, and he told the ref to get out the way too. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Gold Dust, like I said, this is the point where he takes off his glove and you see he's, he's wearing his wedding ring. He's a, he's a, he's a happily married well, man. You, you know what happened is the glove got ripped off earlier in the match, but we never got a clear a shot of his hand until now. Yeah. Uh, Dust, uh, Gold Dust then. So this is the way I don't get. He, he then, he's supposed to be in love with Terry, but then he goes up to her and he's just like, Fuck! He says something to her. You know what I mean? I don't remember. Well, she's the one saying all the smack. Uh, why are you doing this? You I think I think he life? like did this or something. Boyfriend. Or yeah. And then he then he did, he grabbed his crotch because he couldn't do the crotch chop. That's true. So he grabbed his crotch and went. Eh. Yeah. Which I'm like. Then she, she was like, they're playing the angle like, he's he's so in love with her. He he, he wants her back. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then Goldust's you. like, fuck you. Uh, so ref is distracted by Terry and dust is able to get the low blow on, uh, Val Venus's penis, Val mm-hmm. Venus's penises. Uh, mm-hmm. he gets the pin. The cup. Yeah. He, he should have worn the cup. He should have taken his advice. He tried to help you Val Venus and you turned down his help. Shame. Uh, this match had too many rest holds. Seems like they were living and dying by the sleeper hold. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and of course the finish was just, you know, yeah, it was standard, you know, shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, after this, we have Michael Cole backstage recapping the events of earlier tonight with Ken Shamrock slamming the door into Triple H's fucking leg. Hey, he's seriously injured. He's uh, in serious condition. He's back at the bar drinking. Uh, X Pac mm-hmm. walks up. He says, "Shamrock, I don't know what your problem is, but you you you're a real jag off." And I was like, oh, okay, can they not say jack off? I guess not. Yeah. Uh, he challenges Shamrock to the next night on Monday Night Raw. So then we get the European title match. D'Lo Brown versus X-Pac. Uh, this match got 13 minutes and 50 seconds. It felt like it too. But it was actually, okay. I enjoyed let, this match. Let me slow down. I enjoyed yeah. the match too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until. I think this is one of the better matches of the night. Yeah. Um, um, let me see if I see anything odd in my... No, let's just go with it, and then I'll tell you. If, yeah. Uh, so far, it looks like I agree because I see my match score. Uh, D'Lo is billed out of Milan, Italy. Um, <laughs> although D'Lo does, like, one thing ever. He will knock his opponent down and then just tell the crowd, you better recognize! Mm-hmm. Um, D'Lo, yeah, he uh, has slowed control this match. X-Pac knocks D'Lo down into the corner. Um, and D'Lo, he goes for the Bronco Buster, and D'Lo holds his foot up, and 
fucking X Pac flies like six feet back. Yeah. I felt bad for him because, like, I mean, we know later, like, he tore his fucking sphincter mm-hmm. doing a Bronco Buster and things like this probably played a factor into, like, damaging that area. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and, and, and he also braced himself by putting his feet on the ropes and bouncing off of it. But even with all that, you know, him taking care of himself, he still does major damage. Uh, long sleeper to X Pac. We have a very creative sign in the front row. I love getting hard. <laughs> I missed that one. Yeah. Uh, tattooed error. We love you, 1998. Uh, power bomb to X Pac. D'Lo almost gets the the pickup win when he rolls up X Pac uh, out of a crossbody. X Pac then takes another bump, ass first into the top turnbuckle, falling right back on his neck and his head. Mm. Um, D'Lo gets the clover leaf on Pac, uh, but then uh, I think he just lets go. D'Lo gets to the top rope. JR says, Oh, look, he looks like he's going for the lowdown. His version of the frog splash. And then D'Lo does a cannonball. Like, D'Lo mm-hmm. looks, looks like he's going up to his move. He goes up, he's like, I'm going to go up there. And he goes up to the top rope, and you're like, Oh, shit, he's about to hit the lowdown. And then he just goes for a cannonball. I'm like, What? Yeah, like, it's Swanton, no? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it was swanton ish. It was a swanton. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we get the then we just get the Bronco Buster. Uh, China punches D'Lo. X Pac goes for the pin. Uh, D'Lo then kicks out. Uh, ref bump Mike Kyoto kicked out of the ring. Mark Henry comes down, distracts China. There's like 20 million things happening. Mm. D'Lo hits Pac with the title. Uh, Henry throws the ref back in the ring. Pac kicks out. See, it's like another. It's like. How many like false finishes do we have to have here? You yeah. Know, how did many we see shenanigans? The power, the power bomb yet? Uh, I believe we did. Yeah. Okay. There was like some Ill, like, weird timing issue during that power bomb where D'Lo didn't look like he knew where he was in the ring or what was next. D'Lo looked like he know, was it... trying to stall. D'Lo looked okay. like he forgot some spots. I mean, I don't know, yeah. man. D'Lo just legit seemed like there were points where he was like, "What do I do?" Yeah. Yeah. What his timing was totally off for me. Yeah. Uh, then. <laughs> Then okay, so then Henry throws the ref back in the ring. Pac kicks out. Then Dilo gets on the top rope, and I don't know what the fuck Dilo's trying to do. I get what they were. I get what the overall like what they were trying to do on TV. They wanted Dilo to jump off the top rope and fall into the uh, X Factor, mm-hmm. uh, like kind of like the Face Buster. But what was Dilo going for? Like uh, a falling headbutt? You don't even yeah. like, a move we've never seen Dilo do before mm-hmm. in his and career it wasn't a ever. Yeah. yeah, and it wasn't a splash because he never went into the, you know, explosion. Exactly. So See, it's, it's strange. I don't know. Uh, this is the uh, the beginning and middle of this match uh, was slow. Dilo looks like he's jumping into spots multiple times. That being said, uh, the end of this match was kind of fun. I will say that, you know, it yeah, was a lot of bullshit, but it was fun. Kind of the best match so far. Yeah. Uh, Michael Cole backstage. There's uh, He's on rumor alert. Uh, Paul Bear. Might be seen going. He said, "Well, uh, it's just rumors, but Paul Bear might have been seen going into Undertaker's locker room." Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. And then the Headbangers walk up. Oh boy! Uh, so the Headbangers get on the mic. They say, "We got something to say to those New Age outlaws." Road Dog, you ruined our boombox with your face. Now we can't listen to our Marilyn Manson CDs backwards. And Billy Gunn, you country blumpkin, we got two words for you. You suck. That was Thrasher. Then uh, then Mosh decides to add. He goes, and speaking of rockabilly, Wait, what? what's up with that hairdo? You call yourself the tag team champions. The only thing you're tag teaming is each other. Tonight, you're doing the J-O-B on the P-P-V. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I was like, okay, first off, nobody said anything about Rockabilly. I, I think he mit- mixed up Country Blumpkin. You know mm. what I mean? Um, yeah. But yeah, it, 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 I, don't, I don't know what the fuck they were trying to say. Yeah, and then, you know, just because you mix country music and rap, because we know um, Jesse James for shizzle loves the bizzles on the crizzles. Well, he's, <laughs> he, he's, uh, D, he's down with the D.O. Devil Jizzle. That's right. Uh, um, that doesn't make rockabilly, right? No. Um, so then we get the New Age Outlaws versus the Headbangers, which I think is the worst match of the fucking night. 
you know what? I tuned it out. It was time to go get me a slice of pizza from Primo's. There you go. Um, I I drowned it out, but the crowd was really into this. Like I heard the pop, and they they, they just had they were loud and into the match. Yeah. I don't don't ask me why. Maybe the but bar from, started finally filling them up with something. I don't know. Maybe, but you know, audio audio wise, I, I've I heard a lot of pop and. Yeah. Fans are into it. So headbangers attack early. Gun and Mosh are the ones who officially start this match. Um, they go back and forth. Uh, headbangers isolating Road Dog. Hot tag to Gun. Gun cleans house. Then Thrasher trips Gun on the ropes on the outside. Now the headbangers are building the heat on Gun. You know they were building the heat on Road Dog earlier. Now it's on Gun. Herc and Ronald to Mosh. More heat building on Gun. A long, long sleeper hold to Billy Gun. I swear mm. I start to hear a boring chant that I feel like they overdubbed. Uh, uh, maybe. I know for sure there was a boring chant in the pay-per-view, but I don't think it was. Or the main weird. event? Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, Thrasher then runs in and knocks Road Dog off the apron. Uh, Road Dog then smashes uh, Boombox over Mosh's head. and um, For uh, no reason. JR just Just mentions, out of frustration. JR mentions, well, I bet that's not a JVC Boombox. Because JV, if you don't remember, JVC was one of their like big sponsors. Remember that giant boombox they had? It was like a, a circular one, JVC. Yeah, and yeah, it yeah. was like yeah, I can't remember. It was like super, the like, super cool street one. And like nobody's yeah, it here. looked like a uh, it had like a back like, strap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it looked like an egg or something. Yeah, it was weird. Uh, this match sucked. It was way too long. It was a bullshit way, uh, bullshit finish. Uh, yeah. It was way too long for the bullshit finish they gave us. Is what I'm trying to say. Oh, 100 percent. This should have been on heat. Yeah. Uh, Michael Cole back with the rumor roundup. Paul Bear is now in Kane's locker room. And then Mankind what? and S- he says, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's his son. So we're still going that angle. You're right. So Mankind and Sako walk up. Sako calls Shamrock. Uh, he says, oh, his promos are brutal to watch. <laughs> and then uh, Mankind said, the truth is Shamrock's promos may be the second highest reason for teenage suicide. <laughs> Jesus Christ, how many times are we going to say that on so, the show? So you can't say that on 2020, but for 98, that was awesome. Yeah, he is. He is but I got to give the devil his dues. The guy knows his holds. Uh, Mankind <laughs> uh, then shows us he has his hand taped, for uh, like as the mandible claw was taped around the mm-hmm. fingers. So then we go to the Intercontinental title match, uh, which I it seems like I took way too many notes on. Uh, Mankind versus Ken Shamrock. Uh, during Shamrock's uh, entrance, you can hear the same fucking scream over and over. It, what was that? It, it was, I think it was some very high pitched person. I don't want to say oh, it was just some woman. It was somebody screaming over and over again. I don't know who it was. I don't know why, but they were, or it was yeah. just, it, or when they overdubbed it, they overdubbed it with a loop of fans mm-hmm. cheering, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, this is when JR and the Kings talking about um, Pat Patterson said he went he went through 15 wrestlers in one night. That's, oh, what, that's what they said. Yeah, this is, this and, is it. and they all got behind him and he came up on top. See, that's exactly Yeah, that what, was totally, yeah. they were totally getting, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shamrock then works mankind with a series of moves, a fireman su- carry suplex, which is something you don't see nowadays. Arm locked to mankind. Uh, mankind then seems to Try to have an MMA match with Ken Shamrock, rolling around on the ground, trading, uh, exchanging punches. Uh, let's see. So the Mandible Claw gets locked in on Shamrock for a split second, but he gets out of the ring. Mm-hmm. The Mandible Claw is one of those things, like it's the most easiest move to get out of. You just fall. You just fall yeah. out of the ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mankind gets him back in the ring, and he's desperately you know, trying to... I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Do you know who gave him that move? No. Jim Cornette. Really? Yeah, he he mentions it in the book, and I think it was in Beyond the Mat. Okay. And if it was in Beyond the Mat, I know Jim Cornette was the one that bragged about giving him the the. I gave him the move, I swear. I was on Sunday Night Heat, and I told him, you better do that move, mankind. In 1920, there was a wrestler called Butcher Hanson, and Butcher will use this move called the Mandible Claw. Now, what are you going to do? You can't get out of that, and it's the easiest move to put on somebody. Now, it wasn't racist, but... (laughs) Uh, Shamrock then tossed into the steps. Mankind tries to use a chair, but, uh, Shamrock kicks it uh, into Mankind's face because the ref tells him, no, you can't use the chair. So oh, this th- is another one of those. Yeah, what? this is bullshit. Uh, this is fucking bullshit because it's not a no, this is not advertised as a no DQ match. Uh, so mm-hmm. then Shamrock gets a chair and whacks Mankind right in the head with it, 
directly like two feet oh from the ref's face. The back of his head, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. The ref is just vicious. like, though JR gives the reasoning. He goes, well, Mike Kyoto really wants mankind to win the title, so he's giving him the best fight and chance. That's an impartial ref. Mm -hmm. Like, mankind could be and i know it's a fucking work i know you're, they're trying to build a story i know yeah, i'm overanalyzing yeah. this but that's what i fucking do so, jr was saving the 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 explanation he was he saved the, the match he saved it but the way. explanation to me it's just like either the ref's impartial and he doesn't care what goes on and he's a shitty ref or he fucked up. You know what I mean? Sure. But you know it before jr said anything everybody was scratching their heads and then I jr think... said and then he Okay, we get it. I don't think Shamrock was supposed to hit him in the head with the chair. No. I don't think so. I don't think Dude. Shamrock's supposed to go for that chair shot. I think he just went for it. And the ref was like, Bro, it's no DQ. What the fuck do I do? It's not a no DQ. Come he on. probably looked at the back and just saw Patterson or, or Briscoe just like, Keep it going. Keep, keep it, it going, going. yeah. Uh, so Mankind bites down on uh, Shamrock to escape the hammerlock. Uh, belly to belly to Mankind. Double arm. DDT to Shamrock, which eventually will be Mankind's finisher, Roo. Uh Running knee strikes to Shamrock in the corner. Shamrock then in the tree of woe. Mankind then hits the running strike or running knee strikes. Or no, it was like a running like double axe handle. That's yeah. what it was. Uh, to the corner. Elbow drop to Shamrock on the outside. Shamrock then catches Mankind and hits him with a really nice power slam. But right like his leg hits the side of the, the stairs. Yeah, like I don't know if that was practiced or planned, i don't think no i don't think so because i don't mankind, think so either but but you know it, it went along with the um it went along with the story they were telling yeah. where mick mick's ankle was messed up or his leg was messed up well and the, and like mankind you know he's so like he'll take any pain yeah yeah and at first when they went back in the ring shamrock started attacking the wrong leg and you could say you could tell mick was tapping his other leg like no 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 wrong one is this one yeah uh shamrock then has the ankle lock locked in but mankind Starts uh, starts to punch himself in the face, and you've seen him do this Ooh. in the past. And what? he opened himself the hard way too. Yeah, no, he definitely did uh, by mistake because I don't think he was trying to do that. No, no, uh, no because it, mistake, it, yeah. it wasn't that bad at all. There was just a little bit of blood over mm -hmm, his eye. Mm -hmm. uh, but he starts punching himself in the face, pulling his hair out, and you're like, oh, okay, mankind does this. But then mankind <laughs> <laughs> fucking applies the mandible claw to himself, which leads to the a weird finish. Yeah, yeah. so. Shamrock gets the win because Mankind passed out, but not because of the ankle lock. It was declared by the ref. It was because of the mandible claw. And how many times have we ever heard the ref goes, and the winner, Ric Flair via figure four leg lock. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, Kurt Angle via ankle lock. Drew McIntyre via Claymore, you know? No, no, no. It's, see, what you, the reason. way you say it, I'm like... Yeah, I could kind of see like Ric Flair, you know what I mean? Like those old school guys. But mm -hmm. think about it like The Undertaker with the last ride. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Rock with the uh, the people's elbow. Uh, and I forgot how ridiculous that move was until I watched the show. Uh, <laughs> there were moments of greatness in this match, but uh, the long holds were and the the head scratching finish just kind of. This was a high, but it was good. Match. It was a good. It was a good match, though. I thought it was. It was a very good match. Um, Ken Shamrock, even though he, he his stiffness actually plays well with Mick Foley, um, he's a tough son of a bitch too. Yeah, because Mick Foley was hitting him with some stiff shots back, and he took him like a champ. Sells like a champ. Yeah, and you know I can see why they they put a lot of uh, faith in Ken Shamrock. I don't know why, but stuff. I always feel like Mankind and Andre the Giant would have gotten along. Oh yeah. Like, I don't know why, but I feel like they would have been like, hit, like Howard Finkel, man, uh, Mankind, and uh, Andre the Giant, right? Because Howard <laughs> Finkel so and it was, it was Finkel that was a good friend of Andre, right? I think so, yeah. Uh, then we have uh, Michael Cole backstage with Mr. McMahon. Uh, well, we think he's going to interview Mr. McMahon, but he stopped by the big boss man who just is a fucking asshole yeah, cop. Yeah, was this, was this promo any good because I went to the bathroom? No, this is just this. big boss man. He literally said hard times a few times. He said, you think you go back there and just interview the most powerful man in the industry? I'm sorry, I sound like Jim Cornette. But, you know, he says, you're going to go back <laughs> there and, and and interview the most powerful man in the industry. You're going to serve some hard times if you, if, you, if you try to get through me because I'm the big boss man. What do you expect? I'm going to serve you some hard times. You have to answer to me. Hard times. I'm like, all right, you're not fucking dusty. Calm down. Yeah. If you want dusty, we can give you dusty, but it's not going to be dusty. Okay. Man. So next next we get Corey's favorite spot of the whole pay per view. Oh God. Okay. So then we get Mark Henry 
Uh, oh shit, it's eleven o'clock. Um, sorry, we'll I, I pulled back the, the curtain. Sorry, it's eleven o'clock. Sometime, somewhere, maybe someone started the show. What thirty minutes ago? Uh, yeah, so it's Mark Henry versus The Rock, and um, so Mark Henry comes out, and before the match gets underway, Mark Henry has a poem he wrote. I believe this is for China because he dedicates the match to China. I'm going to read it for you because I wrote it down word for word. I paused it every single time. He says, okay, so according to King, he didn't write this, and he came off the top of the head with it. Oh, According to King. Oh, okay, okay. So it's okay. It would make sense because it seems like there was... It was well. Yeah. Okay. Well, there. you be the judge, audience. He says. Uh, he says. Now, last week, I asked you for a chance, but everyone knows I loved you before the implants. <laughs> but now I'm wondering why you keep me waiting. Every place I've ever been, and every place, and every place I have ever seen, I watch the sunrise, and one day I hope to see my sunrise in your. In your eyes, or my daughter. He said that, right? Yes. It was he like did. some weird thing where he says, "In your eyes, or my daughter." I don't get that. Okay. That's the next line. It doesn't matter. All you need to know is we will be together. See, it doesn't matter. So, <laughs> children, all so much the blessing. This is what my heart's confessing. God will show you from above the many ways I express my love. Where do I go when we speak? I don't know, but there's only peace. But I just have to ask, why do you keep me waiting? And give me a chance. <laughs> like, I, so I, I have a theory about this. Okay. I believe the first part and the last part Henry wrote mm -hmm. because he was delivering it just like spot on. He mm -hmm. looked like, not like it came from his heart, but it looked like he he knew what he was doing, you know? Yeah, yeah. But the middle it's much part. Easier, it's much easier to remember something that you have written th than like a script someone wrote for you. But yeah. the middle part was definitely added in there by somebody else because when he was uh, the sunrise in your eyes, and he goes, or even my daughter, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, and, you and, can and, tell he didn't know what, the, like, what, what that really meant. Well, that's why he started writing and said, that doesn't matter. Yeah, all yeah, all that needs to know is we'll be together. So mm -hmm. then we got off, got kick off with the Rock versus Mark Henry. This match got about five minutes and four seconds. I was expecting so much more. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was. It was a decent match. I mean, the Rock. Was, if if this was it, if this was Raw, I'd be like, this is horrible. If this was Heat, I'd be like, okay, decent match, whatever. It's pay per view. It's even above yeah, all it's the pay -per -view. others. So Rock does come out to the Do You Smell What I'm Cooking music. I believe this might be at least it's at least the first pay-per-views come out to this music with. Mm -hmm. The last time he, he just came out to it was the regular uh, nation music. Yeah, uh, which is, it feels a little slower, a little bit more bass heavy. Which was originally Owen oh, Hart's music. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. And uh, the, the Rock's music has more... Like, oh, more snare. bass. Yeah, oh, definitely. But it has more of everything. It's more... Uh, uh, produce. I'm, I'm gonna yeah. say it's more produced. Yeah. It feels more well-rounded and full. Yeah. So that it's more bassy, and the snares really have pop in them, and you know it, it's made for an entrance to be remembered for a generation later. Definitely. Um, and if you want to hear my version of the song, go check out our old SoundCloud. SoundCloud.com <laughs> slash City Wrestling Radio. I remember that. Uh, they battle on the outside. Henry takes control, slams Rock down. King says. Uh, if he can get rocked down and whisper some sweet poetics into his ear, I think that'll just do it. Which I, I fucking love that line. Mm -hmm. Then JR just starts going into some rant about Henry being thick. He goes, Henry is just, he's so thick. He's just so <laughs> naturally thick. I'm like oh, Muscle thickness. I'm like, all right, calm down. Like, it's funny how, like, the last guys are just like, that guy's so fat. Now, like, oh, he's so thick. I'm like, okay, let's calm down. Rock hey, fights. Hey, notice... That that the crowd was really really hot for this, yeah. But then slowly dies well, a that, slow yeah. death. And... Yeah, uh, Rock fights back to the series of strikes and corner, leading to a DDT to Henry, scoop slam to Henry. Which you know, to me, like there was a couple spots where I'm like, they don't even tease the like Henry is way bigger than the Rock is. They mm -hmm. just go for the like the suplex or the power slams. They should have yeah 
built it up a little, like the rock. Yeah, and, and the scoop slam definitely got some pop, but it could have got more if you teased it with like a back thing, like, ah, you're yeah. so heavy. Uh, people's elbow to Mark Henry. Out comes D'Lo Brown. Henry uh, gets up pretty quickly, hits Rock with a clothesline and a running splash to Rock. D'Lo holds Rock's legs, and Henry gets the pin and the win. I will oh. say this. I like the match. I, I did not. I so like anticlimactic. I'm waiting for the rock no, no, to the finish, explode. The finish was dumb. I don't yeah. agree with the finish, but with the overall story arc of the rock, now he's alone and he's getting beaten by his former teammates who will have the, the, each other's back. Like rock is going to need to pair up with somebody pretty powerful. Mm. You know what I'm saying? To uh, eventually maybe, I don't know, win the WWF title. How can he win the title if he can't even beat Henry without somebody in his corner, you know what I mean? Mm, he we'll thinks he thinks he needs help. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we also get a good explanation as to why he stuck around in the ring and did his whole and gave us our because look at him. He's bucket. being a man. He took the loss like a man. Yeah, he just he he took the loss. He says, all right, he will be back. He's taking the loss like a man. So next we have the main event: Kane versus the Undertaker for the WWF Championship with special guest referee Stone Cold Steve Austin. And if he doesn't act like a ref, he's gonna lose his job. He has to humble uh, Jr. the entire night. Oh, he's gotta he's gotta humble himself. Oh boy! <laughs> so in order for him okay. to in order for him to lose his job, he has to do somebody else's job. That's pretty fucked up. Well, I mean, if you're a contract <laughs> worker, you're if you have to be a ref for the night, just be a ref for the night. I mean, fuck. That's just my, but I get what you're saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure refs uh, is a union job or maybe they're at least on the payroll and they're not independent. Contract. You do get a fine if you attack. The original old thing was you're supposed to get a fine when you attack a ref. Mm -hmm. but. Well, they did mention that earlier. Who was it? Was it Ken Shimrock? Uh, so, oh, they're going to get a fine for that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Somebody did. Somebody touched the ref somehow. Uh, Kane had a pretty cool entrance, though. When he comes out, his pyro goes off and it like they have these fences coming down. Mm -hmm. And y you'll see on the screen if you're watching on YouTube what I'm talking about. Uh, but it had this fences coming down with like the, when his pyro went off, the fences lit on fire, which I fucking love. Like it set the whole stage ablaze. Uh, Undertaker comes out, probably his best theme ever. And then Austin totally. comes out. I, I did notice that. I was like, wow, this theme is really cool. I don't know why they dropped it. It's like his heavy metal, like, yeah, Undertaker theme. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. Austin comes out, and he's not wearing a ref shirt. And I don't know why this bothers me, but it, it does. It bothered me, too. I hate when special guest referees, and maybe it's because of the game. Because I remember in some wrestling, because remember the some, like, SmackDown games, you would do mm -hmm. the special guest referee match, and you would have RVD in a ref shirt. And you're like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, he's the ref. But then there would be a couple of times there would be a special guest referee match, and it would just be the person in their regular gear. And I'm like, yeah, why is the you, person in their gear being a Are they ref? doing a run-in? What's going on? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so I think you need to have some sort of zebra stripes on. You know, like even if mm -hmm. Austin like cut it up or, you know, something like, like had it just sticking out of his back pocket. Like, I don't care if you have to have it on. He puts it in yeah. his back pocket or something. I don't care. Some sort of zebra yeah. stripes need to be on these guys. You could have totally marketed a new Stone Cold shirt. Would just put his face on it or a rattlesnake in the back and just have stripes. Yeah, what the ref says, go, 316. Yeah, there you go. Look, you just made them a million dollars. Austin explains the rules to both men like a ref usually does and then flips them both off, which I fucking love. <laughs> yeah. uh, we get an old school to Kane, but JR just calls it Vantage Undertaker. Uh, Kane focuses on Austin and then Taker strikes him from behind. The two men go back and forth, Taker and Kane are down and Austin or Taker has Kane down and Austin won't go for the count. Mm -hmm. Kane then has Taker down, but Austin tries to go for a fast count. I'm like, okay, it's kind of weird. I, I think Stone Cold got a one count, didn't he? No, he, he got a it, one. It was then he stopped for Taker? Or did he land? No. I, I thought so it was a one count. When Taker had Kane down, he didn't go for any yeah. count. He just went. Oh, okay. Then it was when he landed that what I heard. And when Kane had Taker down, he went for a quick two count. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have a snap suplex to Kane. Kane uh, sits right back up. Kane, I I don't know why, but Kane really fucking went for a belly to belly to the Undertaker. But Taker had no idea what was going on, so and he he blocked it. Yeah, and I was like, okay, sure. I just think it was a blown spot. Oh, and you hear you heard him grunt too. Yeah, they grabbed each other. You go, mm! Taker, uh, <laughs> Taker working the left leg of Kane. This match begins to slow down a little bit. Taker then uh, has Kane, bit. Kane tied up in the tree of woe submission. 
uh, has this kind of like le- he's wrapping his leg and kind of stretching his leg over the top rope. Yeah, did, did, did they go outside yet? I uh, I think so. I okay, because when they went outside, there was a funny bit where Austin grabbed like the the video camera cable. Yeah, and tried to hand it to Stone. Uh, oh no, he was. Here, it, he looks like you he go, was trying to get it out. out. He was like trying to get it out of the way for Taker, but he almost trips Taker. With it too, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But then he lifts it up and tries to hand it to, to, to Taker. Taker's like, "What like, are you doing?" <laughs> oh, Austin is just having fun in this match. You can tell he's yeah, cracking yeah. up half the time. And I feel like I wonder what it's like because I'm sure there's some sort of like as a ref, I'm sure there's some things like, "Hey, don't do that." Like mm-hmm. you just don't do that. Don't. But when you're a wrestler, you're like, "I'm gonna fuck with the guy." Watch this. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So he does that. He does that thing right where he's like, "Here, use this, choke him out." And then uh, Taker ignores him, so he goes for a chair. Yeah. <laughs> and you see uh, Stone Cold drop the cable and go, oh, hell, that'll work too. Go at it. <laughs> uh, then we have the, the Goldberg chants start coming through the crowd. A very mm. piped down, though. Taker hits a clothesline to Austin. Uh, and Austin uh, thrown into Kane. We have a choke slam to Austin by Kane. The brothers begin to beat up on Austin. And then, okay, so... That makes sense because at first they're trying to JR is trying like oh they're trying to beat up Austin so they get a new ref down here you know what I mean mm-hmm. and they begin to beat him up and then all of a sudden Taker just kicks Kane in the back of the leg was like ah fuck it mm-hmm. like if you're gonna do it just do it go for it all the way like try to take him out and then yeah, like that, when that was very Royal Rumble um, they should have had Royal they should have had Austin like being like carried out by two other refs. He takes them both out and then comes down and gives the ref a stunner. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. No, but like, like I said, it mentioned, it, it feels like a battle Royal move where you both go against somebody. Then just out of, you know, sheer, I don't give a F anymore. I'm just going to hit the next guy. Next yeah. Time. So Austin's down. We have a choke slam to taker by Kane and Kane falls in exhaustion. All men are down. Then comes out Paul bear with a chair and ball bear. He's like, okay, let me hit Taker with the chair. <laughs> and of course, Kane is, oh God, he's the dumbest baby face ever, I guess. He's like, oh, okay, yeah. I'm going to go after Austin. And, yeah. and, and and of course, Paul Bear whacks Kane in the back. Kane no sells the chair shot. Uh, yeah, it was because Paul Bear has all those donuts in his system. He can't move. Brownies. He's lethargic. Brownies. All the brownies. Yeah, he's right. lethargic because Sorry, of the I love brownies. So I. I would be really mad if Paul Bear was in front of me and took all the brownies. Like, yo, he, he yeah. I would have left his all... plate and like, yo, give me three. <laughs> yeah, uh, he probably had a couple of chicken sandwiches. Yeah, he looked like they were in like a Thanksgiving gave, dinner. Yeah, gave him the itis. He's also oh, I'm why so are they eating smelly. all that heavy food before the fuck a wrestling show? That's what I don't get. Yeah, uh, Paul Bear cowards in the corner as Kane approaches him. Taker then hits Kane directly in the head with a chair. Taker goes for the pin. Austin is up, uh, but doesn't make the count because uh, he just attacked him earlier. Uh, Stunner to Taker, followed by the softest chair shot to Taker's head. Uh, Both Kane and Taker are down, and Austin just counts counts them both out, rings the bell. Austin declares himself the winner because... He can. He's the ref. As a kid, I never fucking understood this. I never understood this. So Okay, so Mike Chioda could have just been like, I'm the light heavyweight champion. He doesn't have the desire for that. He wants to be the best ref he can be. Yeah, okay. Mike That's Kyoto, his Mike. title. That might be why Mike Kyoto, uh lasted so long in the industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Austin, I, I like this dressing room for myself. Look. It's I so nice. Brooms, it's it warm. TV. You know, yeah. Uh, it's the next boilers to catering. always running. Uh, you know, I, I would say this would have been a better match if it was just five minutes less cut off the match. I liked it, but the five minutes. parts where people, when people started chanting boring, that was the edit point. Yeah. Uh, I don't get why Kane and Taker uh, attacked Austin just to give up on it, like literally a minute later. Or so, yeah. You know what's a really cool spot in this match is when they were doing that grind, you know, where Undertaker was grinding on um, Kane's knee and Austin <laughs> kind of had his fill and he just kind of <sighs> went to the corner and just chilled out. Yeah, he's like, Kane out in the corner, just, well, well, come on, you guys, do something. Yeah. And then he came in to check on Kane. Okay, do you quit? No? All right. And he went back to the corner. Oh, he's like, do you quit? Do you quit? I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, dude. Uh, Austin then, uh, he challenges me. He says, well, Vince, you see me a man of your word? Come down here and fire me. Uh, Austin then heads to the locker room because he doesn't come out. It, it's funny because I don't think people knew he was coming back there. Uh, he runs into Bruce Pritchard at the original gorilla position, which was just like a table. Uh, by mm-hmm. the curtain, and uh, he goes in the back, uh, walks into like the superstar hotline room, and you could clearly hear <laughs> Doc yeah. Hendricks or Michael Hayes. You're like, I don't know, I don't know where he is. 
Uh, then he walks into another room, and it's fucking Owen Hart, like, on a phone call. He's like, mm. where is he? And he's like, I, I don't know, dude. I don't, I don't know. I'm talking to a fan right now. I'm talking to my wife, dude. Come on. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm talking to honestly, he's that's like, probably who he's talking to. For me now. <laughs> um, and it's funny, because the Blue Blazer gimmick, they're trying to do this whole thing, like, oh, we know it's Owen Hart, but it's not really Owen Hart. Like, what? I don't know. I feel like he's trying to hide who he is. Why call him out for it? You know? Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't know who it was until they called him out. So, yeah. Uh, Austin gets back in the ring and you start to hear Vince is like, oh, raise, that, raise that damn screen. And the screen, get, the screen uh, gets risen. Austin, or then Vince uh, appears behind, which was smart, behind a plexiglass protected stage. Oh, but he immediately caught somebody's scarf to the face. He caught a bunch of stuff. Well, that was the first thing. And, uh, they, and it kind of died down a little bit. Then it started coming. Oh, because he sold it, too. It landed, like, yeah. right on. And so he was just like. And everyone, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, luckily, the sodas were um, were blocked by the plexiglass. He says, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, I wish I could say your services were no longer needed. Stone Cold then mentions how Vince again doesn't have the balls to fire him. And then Vince again says, Austin, screw you. You're fired. Two times. He says it twice. I'm mm-hmm. not going to do it twice because mm-hmm. my voice is kind of shot at this point. Uh, Austin says, well, you may you may have seen the last of me in a WWE ring. You may not see me in a WWE ring anymore. But Vince. And while he's saying that, Vince gets carted out because he's catching too much debris. Oh, dude. He's catching. There's so many sodas flying his way. They're like everything. Him, yeah. Um, he says, but Vince, if you think you've seen the last of Stone Cold Steve Austin, you've been mistaken. Now hit my music one last time. Austin then salutes the fans with his Bud Light, and JR is like borderline emotionally crying. He's like, Well, that's the it to the greatest wrestler I've ever seen. Uh, Rattlesnake, goodbye, Rattlesnake. May our paths cross again someday. Just like fucking JR. <laughs> stop, stop overselling this shit. Like, yeah, really. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was, um, that was what was it? That judgment was heat Day and Judgment Day. Judgment Day, nineteen ninety eight. Oh boy, it was it was a show. Yeah, some highlights, some good, some mm. bad, mostly bad. I need to know who the agents of these pay per views are. Doc Hendricks, because, uh, Bruce Pritchard, mm-hmm. um, probably Pat Patterson, Gerald Briscoe. Yeah, and I think even Corny has uh, some say oh, in there. Yeah, uh, Corny for sure. Um, yeah, I think those are the old. Yeah, yeah and, and Russo's there writing, so he's doing like the. I don't think Russo's stuff. in there yet. No, I think he is. He's doing like the because he's totally there for the same. Because stuff. Russo was, he was there. He he was a writer on the website, and then he got promoted to TV. That's right. Yeah. So, but we'll. So I'm wondering. Know. I'm wondering around the time for, because this this reeks. I'm not saying. The ending. Oh, there were so many of Russo. It's the storylines and the you know the sexual innuendo. Val Venus reeks of uh, Vince Russo. Just yeah. Saying. Yeah. Oh, no, you're right. Uh, Vince Russo was hired as a freelance writer for WWF Magazine in 1992. Uh, he was promoted to the creative team in 1996. Yeah, he, he totally. Oh, but he only, yeah, and he worked until 1999. So this is, yep, yeah, this is. Uh, this is Prime Russo. Prime Russo. Russo. I tried to say it in a French accent, but I can't for some reason. Well, I think that about does it for here, for us. Yes. We're going to get out of here because we're done with Judgment Day in your house, 1998. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe at CWR415, at City Wrestling Radio on everything else. And anything else you want to add? I'm going to go watch Okada Osprey right now. That was a good match. You need to go watch it. That's right. I'm going to go watch uh, the G1 finals. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye-bye.